Hello, everyone. I am Xia Xingyu from Nanjing University. Today, I'm going to talk to you about our research, a machine learning-based method for predicting urban land use. We all know that in urban planning and design, land use is very important. So, what is predicting urban land use? First, let's have a review of some digital studies related to land use. In urban design, land use is only part of the design. It's often given directly in advance or simulated and optimized based on a goal during the design process. Compared to land use itself, the detailed functional organization is more important. Urban planning concerns more about land use and cover change. People build various models to simulate and predict long-term area CC dynamics or to do the classification and pattern recognition of land use for satellite maps. These studies all have wide study areas and rough land use classifications. Our research falls between these two. We want to explore the land use of a certain plot at the medium scale. Then why is machine learning? This figure is a typical urban plane with really single land use. It's drawn by experience. But today, cities are complex. Land use tends to be combinatory, and factors affecting land use are also various, including topography, climate, policies, the land use of surrounding environments, and so on. Tobler's first law of geography just emphasizes the influence of surrounding space. Anyway, it's difficult to have a comprehensive consideration of all these factors by humans alone, so we need to find a new method. We often conduct case studies to summarize common rules and patterns and apply them to work. From another perspective, we are learning rules from case data. Machine learning can also learn from data and is more efficient, so this time we try to apply machine learning to our research. Now, what actually did we do? First of all, we classified land use into five basic categories, business, industrial, public, residential, and green space. Then, we built a machine learning model to learn the city's land use logic. When applying this model, we just need to input data, run the model, and get a result. Obviously, the key part of our research is this machine learning model. The modeling process includes three steps, data definition and collection, dataset processing, and model training. I will take Nanjin as a case study to introduce the details of these steps. The first step is to collect the raw land use data. We took the Old Town area of Nanjing as the study area. The Old Town is surrounded by old city walls and covers an area of approximately 43 square kilometers. The Old Town's land use has been fully mixed over time and we believe it's worth studying. We used the web crawler algorithms to collect the current urban land use map data and point of interest data and combine these two to obtain accurate land use data. The second step is to process and generate the input dataset of the model. We graded the study area at a 100 meters times 100 meters scale and superimposed the land use proportion data on the grid to obtain a land use matrix. Then, based on more neighborhood theory, we sliced the matrix at the size of 3 times 3 and selected the slices that 9 grades all had data as samples. We took the surrounding 8 grades as input, the middle grid as label, and generated a labeled dataset. The dataset would then be used for the computer to learn the correlations between the input and labels. Neural network is one of the most popular machine learning algorithms, and three types of neural networks are commonly used in the urban field. Convolutional neural networks and generative adversarial networks process image input, while artificial neural networks process numerical input. 
Since the proportion data are expressed in numerical form in our research, we selected the ANN as our main model framework. After constructing an initial network on TensorFlow platform, we began to train the model. A neural network has two types of parameters, the weight and bias parameters and hyperparameters. They are optimized by model performance evaluation. Evaluation functions usually calculate the loss and accuracy of the model. A loss function calculates the degree of non-fitting of the network to the supervised data, and the larger the function value is, the worse the performance is. The network takes this value as a metric to optimize the weight and bias parameters. Here, we use the cross-entropy error function as the loss function. An accuracy function can assess the performance directly. We combine qualitative and quantitative methods and define a validity score function as the accuracy function. Score 1 judges if the prediction is equal to the label, and score 2 judges the degree to which the prediction deviates from the label. We calculate the weighted sum of two scores to get a final one. We randomly divided the dataset into a training set and a testing set at a ratio of 7 to 3 and input into the network. The parameters were optimized based on the evaluation functions, and when the validity score and loss value reached a relatively satisfactory level, the training ended. Here is the structure and the settings of the final model. The last training process had 1,500 epochs. Judging by the evaluation result, we believe this model is effective to a degree. Next, we did some analysis with data from the last training process and tried to answer some questions. The first question is, how did the network learn? We analyzed the changing trends of the predictions on the training set. As shown, the value changes rapidly at first and then slow down, only undergoing some fine-tuning. In other words, the network will first quickly determine a wide value range based on the target and then to perform fine adjustment and optimization in a small range to approach the goal. Besides, about model performance, we calculated the score distribution of the predictions on the testing set. Over 60% of the samples are above B level, so we can see the performance is satisfactory in general. Then, on which type of samples did the model perform well? We can see that samples with relatively low G proportions and high A proportions in the surrounding plots can get higher scores. That is, it's easier to find rules among such data. The most important thing may be the rules. We tried to analyze the A-level samples with the best performance. We grouped them by the dominant land use of the prediction and did some statistics for each group. Several rules can be summarized from the results, and they are consistent with our common knowledge, showing that the computer can truly learn from the data. Meanwhile, we can see that the average score of the industrial-dominated group is lower than other four groups. Perhaps it's because the size of industrial samples is too small. Only with sufficient, high-quality data can we make full use of machine learning. We also compared between the surroundings and the predictions. Except the industrial-dominated condition mentioned before, the two lines almost coincide. This surprising similarity may be one of the computer's prediction principles. Finally, let's do a brief summarization. It's believable that rules really exist among land use data. Based on this, we've established a feasible research workflow and built a relatively useful model. But there are still some problems. For example, now the model can only predict one unknown grid at a time, so the practical application is limited. Besides, our model isn't perfect, and even if it's perfect, it still cannot perfectly cope with such a complicated city. So rather than replace humans to be a decision maker, it's more likely to function as an auxiliary reference tool for urban planning and design. 
In the future, we are going to do more to improve our research. We hope to build a more effective and comprehensive model someday. Thank you for your listening.